Module 2. How will you learn a script fastest? Let your eyes decide. You probably became a fluent reader so long ago that you have forgotten what the process was like. Good schools and educated families train students effectively, and almost any method will work for well-to-do children. But what if you must learn a new script without help? Let your experience teach you how our brain best learns reading. This module allows you to explore which reading methods may be more effective for learners who have no prior knowledge about a reading system. You will experience some elements of how our visual system perceives letters. You will also have the chance to reflect on your own school experiences and try to see what may or may not apply for students in low-income countries. All of us involved in this course learned to read early. We had parents reading to us at night, and we lived in an environment full of writing examples. We heard thousands of words in complex speech patterns, and we acquired large vocabularies that can be mapped onto letters. So we tend to view print through the lenses of educated readers. But these lenses may play tricks on us. In most schools of higher income countries, all but the seriously disabled learn to read. Teachers are well educated and show up for work. They pay attention to individual children's needs, pace instruction according to difficulty, provide feedback, and help the weaker students. There is time to review, to present material in different ways, have fun, and explore meaning early on. It's possible to learn reading through entire words and sentences. Let us visit a public school located in central Doha in Qatar. Schools have many resources and highly educated teachers. By grade two, students have already learned to read whole words in both Arabic and English. The class shows how a committed government can help fulfill the potential of students. Let's watch the video. Do you think the ocean is big or small? The ocean is small. Look at the pictures there. Huh. Big. Excellent. Can you come and pick that car? Big? Come, please. Who can spell big, please? Huh? Yeah. Can you find it? I need the word. Can you find the word big? Now, let's visit a school in rural Niger. It's very different from the one in Doha. There are no textbooks. Instructional time is used poorly. Teachers receive little training, and they are also often absent. Students may themselves attend sporadically, so they may forget letters from one class to the next. Parents are often illiterate and cannot help children at home learn what they miss in school. Let's watch the video. Comment ça fonctionne? 
Okay, I'm Chili. Chili. Vous avez combien d'élèves 17. Mais maintenant, je vois ici... Où sont les autres Où sont les autres Ils sont absents. Est-ce que généralement, vous avez la moitié comme ça Let's experience some challenges of learning basic reading from the perspective of a child with no prior reading experience or knowledge of the official language. Imagine you are in a rural school of a low-income country that has decided to adopt Japanese as a language of instruction. On day one, the teacher starts teaching the regularly spelled hiragana syllabic script. Your parents do not know the language and cannot help you. Textbooks are somehow unavailable. You are sitting near the back of the classroom. The teacher interacts mainly with the front rows. Your only feedback is other students' answers, so you are largely self-instructing. Let's see how much you can learn in this context. Some reading specialists believe that students should be taught reading through whole language methods. This is based on the assumption that children should start by learning to read entire meaningful sentences. In several countries, the students may not know the official language of instruction. The textbooks focus on the language, so the reading method becomes whole language. Let's see if this method works for you. Look carefully at the first sentence, which means, I read a book. Listen to the audio several times. Now, repeat verbally what you heard. Can you say the entire sentence? Write on paper what you saw. Did you succeed in learning to read an entire meaningful sentence? Please, try this exercise multiple times if needed. Some reading specialists expect a beginning student to look at a picture, see its name written below, and automatically link the name of the object. This is sometimes called the look and say method. The children may just guess by looking at a picture. Could the child recall the same word within a text when there are no illustrations? See for yourself if this method works for you. Look carefully at the word. Listen to the audio several times. Karada. Karada. Point to the picture, the body, and say its name in Japanese. Write on paper what you saw from memory. How did you do? Along with look and say, some reading specialists believe that students should be taught to recognize whole words and learn to read one word at a time. This is commonly known as the whole word method. For example, on the first week of class, you must memorize both the sound and shape of some words. In this exercise, each word will appear for 10 seconds. Repeat the sound and try to write what you saw. Dingo. Dingo. Inu. Inu. Sakana. Sakana. Hana. Hana.
赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤赤
Combine letters into syllables. Get lots of practice. Read texts about three times. Get corrective feedback from teacher or good students. When you know a word and sound it out, you probably understand it. You might wonder, why are some important principles of this course not better known? Educators are practitioners, so they practice certain methods, but they are rarely able to explain exactly why they work. Cognitive psychology and neuroscience are mainly taught in psychology departments, not in colleges of education. This course combines the two disciplines. You will understand how cognitive science predicts methods and activities that should work under various circumstances. Often teaching recommendations are best practices. Relevant research is needed, but funding has been limited and experiments could take years. However, cognitive science principles can be used. The use is translational, but humans everywhere process information in roughly similar ways. And new neurocognitive research is constantly being published. Relevant findings can be translated into classroom activities and resources. More specific research is needed on the reading basics for low-income students. Please consider your experiences while learning a script. Contrast the ease of pronouncing Japanese versus the difficulty of remembering strange shapes. Why do you think this happens? Language learning is an innate ability, and a good chunk of the brain is dedicated to it. By contrast, reading is not an innate activity. It relies on brain circuits specialized for identifying small objects and faces. To piggyback reading on this function is a challenge for the brain. It requires attention to low-level details, and it is initially slower. Some educators confuse the language and script learning functions and somehow assume that they are learned at the same rate. Thus, many books of African countries start with whole pages of dialogue under the assumption that script is somehow absorbed. These issues will be discussed further in the subsequent modules.